For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch which brings you stories of resistance and struggles against capitalist exploitation and state repression. We first bring you breaking news from Bolivia, where security forces massacred at least five protesters demonstrating against the right-wing coup in the country. In the second segment, we go to India, bringing you voices from the Fee Must Fall movement in Jawaharlal Nehru University and the International Vendors Day March in New Delhi. Finally, we take a look at the custodial killing of an Aboriginal teenager in Australia. Bolivian security forces killed as many as five protesters on November 15 in Sakaba, Cochabamba and gravely injured hundreds. The indigenous and peasant protesters who hail from Coca Farmer Federations were attempting to march from the small city of Sakaba to the department's capital, Cochabamba, when they were met with a military and police cordon. As the peaceful march attempted to advance, soldiers and police officers fired at the protesters with tear gas canisters and live bullets. The protesters intended to march to the city of Cochabamba and to reach the country's capital, La Paz, on Sunday in order to join the thousands of Bolivians mobilizing against the civic military coup carried out against President Evo Morales and Vice President Alvaro Garcia Linera. On November 12th, Right-wing Senator Janine Anes declared herself interim president of Bolivia in a session without quorum, which would theoretically render the declaration illegitimate. Shortly after she was decorated with a tricolor sash by military officials, she thrust up a massive Bible and proclaimed, the Bible has returned to the palace. She was accompanied by right-wing leader Fernando Camacho, who was one of the driving leaders of the pro-coup mobilizations. Now we go to India. Students from New Delhi-based Jawaharlal Nehru University are continuing their protest against the massive hostel fee hike and curfew timings. On Tuesday, the university administration partially rolled back the fee hike after the executive committee meeting. The Students and Teachers Union called this a hogwash and an attempt to fool the students as major demands remained unanswered. We spoke to JNUSU representative Saket Moon to know about the partial rollback and what it actually means. This is a clear indication of the pressure that we have managed to build upon the HRD ministry and the JNU administration. However, this is not what we wanted. This is a compromise. We are not uh, fighting this movement for the last month to reach a compromise. We are fighting it to uh, so that our demands are completely accepted by the JNU administration. So there is no question of going back. And why that is, I will just explain to you in a couple of simple reasons. First of all, Twitter is no substitution for dialogue. Dialogue cannot be replaced by tweeting on uh, an important issue like this. So, the Vice Chancellor should first of all come and meet us and talk to us regarding what is happening in jail and why it is happening and what can be done. Second of all, the draft of the manual uh, has certain provisions. The first provision is that the power to uh, do a fee hike has uh, been transferred from the IAC meeting where student representatives, uh, whether it be from the JNUSU or the hospital president, uh, it is, has been taken from their ambit into the ambit of the vice chancellor and his extraordinary powers. Now there is uh, not a single person in this university who will trust the vice chancellor uh, to not increase the fee hike once we take our movement back. On Thursday, November 14th, rallying beneath the red flag of the Centre for Indian Trade Unions, street vendors in the capital city of New Delhi, organised under the Street Hawkers Union of Delhi, marched through the Parliament Street commemorating International Street Vendors Day. The primary demand of the street vendors is implementation of legal protections accorded to them by law, which would grant them security from extortion and eviction by police and municipal authorities. They also spoke out against foreign direct investment in the retail sector. A 2015 study by the Centre for Civil Society based on eight markets in Delhi, comprising of 8,150 street vendors, found that a hawker loses an average of around Rs. 1,76,000, which was then equal to around $2,650 every year. This amounted to almost 30% of the annual income lost to paying bribes, penalties, affidavit charges, and costs incurred due to goods damaged during evictions. Let's hear from people who joined the protest. There is a street vendor act made in 2012 and which was supposed to be implemented in the entire country which was implemented 
and after that many people went to the Supreme Court on the issue of encroachment and Supreme Court merely said that as far as in permanent encroachment is concerned there is problem in that but apart from that all other ready patri in different streets are being allowed because they provide cheap goods to the common people because they provide cheap goods to the working class of this country and which is a requirement secondly they have also said that they the kind of unemployment which is there in the country if some people are doing some self jobs or self created works that needs to be protected so that was some and substance of the supreme court judgment on the basis of that judgment only the high court also gave a similar kind of judgment with slightly you know slightly stronger in its tone on encroachment because there are some problems in encroachment also in delhi especially in some areas where there is a there is there is congestion in the population and traffic and especially around the schools so that is there but apart from that delhi high court also allowed ready patri walas to have their readies in different locality this is this both the orders are being misused by delhi police by the central government under their dictates and by mcd to remove all the ready patri walas from delhi and that is what has happened and what is happening as far as we know at least in 40 places ready patri is being replaced in ring road inside the ring road almost all the ready patri places are being you know dislocated or they are displaced and there is a continuous attack on them there is a kind of hafta wasuli and all kinds of things happening this is a sheer exploitation which needs to be opposed so that is what we are trying to argue that the, through unionization we should oppose this kind of move of delhi police next we go to australia where last week protest demonstrations and rallies took place all across the country in response to the custodial killing of kumanjai walker walker was a 19 year old aboriginal man from the walpiri tribe he was shot on november 9th in his home in yundumu a small town in northern territory with a population of less than 800 people Protest took place in major cities including Sydney and Melbourne and also in the parliament lawns in Canberra. Other places where demonstrations took place include Darwin, Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide, etc. Following these nationwide protests, Zach Rolf, the police officer responsible, was charged with murder. However, he was later released on bail with full pay following an out of session court hearing. Walker is the second Aboriginal person to die after being shot by police in the last two months, adding to a long list of incidents of custodial deaths of Indigenous people in Australia. Deborah Green, a Yamadji woman, wrote that there has been a long history of our people being afraid of the police because historically, the organisation was conceived to keep First Nations people away from colonisers, in many cases by shooting and killing them. Today, the same continues to occur, though under the guise of maintaining law and order. And this is all we have for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.